Howdy folks! In today's weekend video, we'll be taking a look and reviewing the Ugreen 200 watt solar panels. These are the portable and foldable solar panels. In my case, I got them around the Black Friday time frame when the prices on these were considerably uh, down, and I paired it with my Jackery 1000 V2 solar generator. It is a pretty good combination. It only needs an adapter in order for this to work because of the way the cabling configuration is made uh, between those two items, obviously different vendors. But other than that, uh, it is a pretty good uh, setup. In the main box, we have a box with a handle with the solar panel uh, themselves. It is protected well and no issues during shipment or transportation. Obviously, it's always worrisome to make sure that they arrive without any damage and they're packaged well. The four corners of the solar panel were protected with styrofoam, so made it without any problems. In the box, we have the manual, we have the solar panel itself, and also we'll have two cable connectors to be used based on uh, your setup. The XD60 connector on the solar panel is where one of the two provided cables that you can use to connect the solar panel to whatever solar generator you have. As I said, in my case, we'll also be using an adapter. The handle is very nice on the solar panel, so very comfortable to carry it. And we also have two magnets in the corners to help the panel stay foldable. They're not super uh, heavy duty magnets, but they're good enough. In the box, like I mentioned earlier, we do have two cables. One of them is going to be XT60 to XT60. This is going to be female on both ends. One of the ends plugs into the solar panel, the other end into your generator or into an adapter. And then the other cable is going to be an XT60 to the MC4 connector. Red is the positive, black is the negative. I know there are a couple of other variations floating around there. So if you do get this package, uh, make sure you verify that the polarity is correct in your case, because I think there were different types of polarity uh, MC4 connectors sent. And here we have the solar panel partially uh, opened. Uh, and we see that we have, again, good protection uh, within the packaging to make sure that the solar panels are not damaged. Essentially, you have four foldable sections in order to complete this 200 watt setup. And in the back, we have three legs in order for the solar panel to be angled at its optimal angle to the sun. Essentially, you have two legs on each end and then one kind of in the middle, or at least middle left, to the solar panel. And in my case, as I said earlier, I'll have to use an adapter in order to use it with the Jackery uh, 1000 V2 power solar generator. Uh, Jackery's use a uh, eight millimeter for the connectors for the solar panel. So in my case, I'm gonna get an XT60 uh, male into the eight millimeter uh, section on the Jackery side. And then I'm going to use the existing cable that was provided with Ugreen and then connect it that way. On the solar panels, we do have the mark in order to show us the best angle to mount it at. So there is a circle in the center that casts shadow and this way it helps us to make sure the angle is optimal in order to get the best wattage during uh, the time when we're trying to charge up the solar generator. And when it's in the center, we know we're the best angle at this time. In my case, I'm connecting it to the adapter, and then the adapter goes into the Jackery unit, and it should automatically power on once it senses there is input. In my case, uh, I'm getting 166, 67 looks like watts out of this 200 watt rated solar panel. At this time, uh, it is uh, end of November, early, De uh, early December time frame, so the sun here is not at the best angle. Hopefully when we get to the summertime time frame, we'll get some better results uh, and then get even higher wattage. But even at, uh, during the winter time, getting 167 watts, I think that is fairly reasonable at this time. Uh, in my case, I have 11% uh, on the battery left, so that means at its current rate, it will take uh, you know, almost seven hours to get this charged. Now, in reality, we don't have seven hours of sunlight in the day here uh, in order to get it charged, so it's going to take more than one day in my case. Uh, trying to adjust the solar panel, I tried different angles, etc., to get it uh, maybe in a better, more optimal section, but um, looks like 160 to 165 is the best what I was able to get 
in kind of late afternoon aspect. In this next test, what I would like to do is cover one of the solar panels, so one of the four solar panels that we have that is making this 200 watt rating, and I would like to see how does that affect the charging. I'm expecting to obviously have some drop, but hoping that the other three solar panels will be able to overcome that, and looks like we're getting 123 watts instead of that 160-ish. So again, in the current setup, uh, even though they're rated 50 watts each, looks like we're getting about 40 watts out of each solar panel under the current conditions. And then I'm, I'll go ahead and cover another section here. So then roughly, if my math is gonna be correct and assuming everything set of Y stays the same, we should be getting at about 80 watts in that case. And two obviously panels are gonna be covered. And in our case, in this scenario, we're getting 81 watts. So again, based on those results, it is reasonable. And the next test here is going to be partially covering one of the solar panels, meaning that are we still going to have the same drop as if this whole solar panel is covered or not? And in this case, when uh, only 50% of one solar panel is covered, it is essentially as if the whole section is covered, so it doesn't matter. Uh, looks like the three other solar panels in the setup is what's generating the power, but whether in the fourth solar panel, whether half of it is covered or it is fully covered, looks like we're essentially not getting a lot of difference. It is almost uh, the same. So that is something to keep important to keep in mind that if you are going to get shade uh, onto a good amount of shade for you know 50% of the solar panel, you're essentially ruling out the solar panel from getting uh, a lot of power. And in this test, you can see that uh, you know I'm, I'm covering even even a smaller section, but essentially the same thing. When a good part or even a partial part of the solar panel across the board is covered that section is not generating much power. Removing it out of the shade, we're back to 164 watts of power on the input side. From the build quality perspective, uh, the solar panels are made from monocrystalline silicon cells. And then the coating on this is gonna be ETFE from uh, the Ugreen website. That in theory should be a good coating that should last for years to come. Longevity times, we'll see how that goes. Uh, obviously from the build quality itself, they look to be okay and fair. Again, they're meant to be uh, portable, so foldable. Obviously that's why they're thin. I'm not gonna say they're flimsy, they're not flimsy, but obviously you don't have a lot of durability from the aspect of being rigid. Again, expect it since it is a foldable and a portable solar panel. So this is something that we'll see how they handle weather-wise weather -wise over the years. Uh, from the IP rating perspective on their website, uh, Ugreen states that they're IP67 rated, so in theory should have some waterproofing capabilities with this. In the manual, it did not state that, so we shall see. In my current case here, uh, you know, I was able to get in this winter time frame 165 through 170 for a couple of minutes here and there. In the summertime, hopefully we'll get closer to the 200 aspect. But uh, from my testing, I was able to, you know, input the voltage into my jacker unit and also start charging my e-bike battery at the same time. And they were able to continue working with the jacker unit without an issue. These specific solar panels are rated for 24 volts for the open circuit voltage. So uh, if you'll be getting any solar panels, where whether it's these or not, you need to make sure that uh, the voltage is gonna be acceptable within the limits of the power station or whatever input inverter you're going to be using at. Uh, so again, these solar panels are 24 volts. There are some 12 volt solar panels, batteries out there. So it's important to ensure that the right solar panel voltage is and can be handled by the unit that is being charged. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have found this video helpful and beneficial. Have a great day, bye-bye.